Recently I made a video on bad albums by great rappers, so of course I had to take that, flip it around and do the opposite. Now, you might have noticed that I've decided to call this one good albums by bad rappers and not great albums, just to make it clear that quite a few of these aren't exactly amazing, they're just a little bit better than what I usually expect from these rappers that I don't usually enjoy. And of course keep in mind here that bad rappers is just a really quick short way of saying rappers that overall aren't often enjoyed by me. But right before we get started, I'm pleased to announce that this video is sponsored by DistroKid, the very service that I've used since 2017 to distribute my I Am Jace music to streaming platforms. Hell, this sponsorship opportunity might just bring I Am Jace back. I can tell you from my own experience that it's fun and easy to use with unlimited uploads and artists keeping 100% of their royalties and earnings. Now, I'm gonna share some extra details about them with you guys, but if at any point during this you would like to sign up with them, my link is at the very top of the description that you can use to get 7% off of your first year's membership with them, which is an extra little discount on top of their already extremely affordable pricing plans. Now, you can use them on desktop, but they've also recently launched a new iPhone app where you can sign in to an existing account if you already have one, or you can sign up and pay for a new membership. You can upload new releases from within the app, and you can also check your DistroKid bank and withdraw your earnings from within it. Uploading from there is super straightforward too, with a step-by-step -step process laid out within the upload form, and they even have a couple additional extras at the end that you can add on if you want to, it's not necessary but it's optional, such as the Discovery Pack, which allows your music to be registered with SoundScan, which is what Billboard uses to track music for their charts. What's more, Distro DistroKid also offers an extra optional service called Mixia. Now we all know nothing can replace the expertise of a real human mastering engineer, but if you're short on time or resources and you just don't have access to that, for $99 per year you can get an unlimited number of songs mastered through this Mixia service. You can customize the end result with unlimited previews of the mastered song and then when you're happy with how everything sounds and you think it's finished, in a way you want it to be, you can download it, and like I said, you can do this with an unlimited number of songs with Mixia. DistroKid is a service that I've used and trusted for years now, so if you want the best way to get your music distributed, click on my link down in the description below, and like I said, you get 7% off your first year's membership. Make sure you use that link to get your discounted plan and download their free iPhone app, because it's a great way to be able to just manage everything everything and like I said, even upload new music directly from your phone. Much love to DistroKid for sponsoring today's video, I'm extremely happy that me and DistroKid are working together. Anyway, with that being said, let's get started. Never too much, never too much, never too much, never too much. Uh, we'll start with one that I'm sure will only inspire nice positive, wholesome comments. I mean, he's in the thumbnail, it's probably what most of the comments are about already. Bro, I can't believe you put King Vamp in the thumbnail with g -E -Z. Now, Carty is currently rated as a 5 out of 10 in my Worst Rappers in the Game series, which doesn't seem like a bad score at all, but you have to keep in mind that this album is pretty much the whole reason why his score went up. It's the only album from him where my rating would be more positive than negative, so I would say it fits the criteria as a great album from a rapper that I just usually don't enjoy that much. Something about Whole Lotta Red just hits differently. You start off with something more gritty and intense than most Playboy Carti songs out there with Rockstar Made, and that energy is carried throughout a large portion of the album. No Tank and No Sleep are specific examples that are just insane. I got me some dice. They thought I was gay. Remember, you put that side of the purple light lean. When I go to sleep, I dream about murder. When I go to sleep, I dream about murder. But I do also love a lot of the more melodic, less abrasive tracks on here as well. Songs like Slayer and New Neon just activate the happy chemicals in my brain. The second those instrumentals start, man, there's just something about them that I love, and then Carty just meshes with them perfectly. I'm a 
I stopped, I could've joined Slayer. Got the drum in the car, that bitch a Slayer. Hey, stop playing, yeah. Hard and tight, yeah. And it's also got Sky, which is just a top tier Carty song. It's interesting because a lot of the tracks on this album go for an extremely similar sound. There's essentially two different types of sound on Whole Lotta Red, but somehow the majority of the tracks are still distinguishable from each other. Whether that's because of what Carty does with them, or the small differences and quirks in the production. And yeah, I think the most interesting thing about this album is how it's very easy to mistake for being super simple. Like, I could imagine somebody who doesn't like any new rap music listening to it and being like, bro, absolutely anybody could make this. But I really don't think anyone could. I think only Playboy Carti could make Whole lot of Red work as well as it does. This is easily my favourite album of his when it comes down to the expressiveness of his voice and how he uses it. Carty honestly works some magic on this album. I feel like I shouldn't like something like Teen X, for example, I feel like I should hate that song, but there's something about the way that Carty works with that beat that just makes it intoxicating. I'm an ex, I'm an I'm starting the video off with this album because it's the best one in it, in my opinion. When I put Carti in a bad rappers type of video, it's because I do get what he's doing with a lot of his music, but there's so much of it that just doesn't click with me personally. But as you can tell, his whole lot of red stuff really does. And honestly, if Playboy Carti's next album is as good or better than Whole Lot of Red, then I'll probably stop putting Carti in videos like this for the time being. I've been broke my whole life. I have no clue what to do with these rats. They be late, waste nuts, ass back. As of now, Cardi B has made it onto four of my worst hit songs of the year lists. It's safe to say that she has a fair bit of music that I don't really enjoy. And considering she's only been dropping singles or features for like five years at this point, that's primarily how I judge how good of a rapper she is right now. Not a big fan of her overall, but with that being said, her Invasion of Privacy album is actually pretty enjoyable. From the very first song, Get Up 10, it just felt like Cardi was saving her strongest material for this album. There's a lot of people that like to hate absolutely anything that Cardi does, but I guarantee if any other rapper dropped Get Up 10, they'd be calling it hard as hell. I was covered in dollars, now I'm dripping in jewels, a bitch play with my money, might have spit in my food. I don't want your punk ass man, I'm too tough. I'm the one that's killing shit, hands down. It's got a solid, well-placed variety of moods throughout the album. Be Careful sees Cardi go for a softer type of song, Best Life is more upbeat, I Like It is a Latin trap banger, and then of course you have your darker sounding trap songs like Bodak Yellow and I Do. That scissor hook on I Do, by the way, man that shit gets stuck in my head so easily. She really snapped with that, and Cardi's verses go hard too. Well, I do whatever I like, I do. And I can't not mention the takeoff verse on Drip. That is part of the album after all, and his flow on it is immaculate. Can't do drip, drip. I ain't never slipping on my pen, pen. Fucking with a quarter million nigga with a fill. What the mission nigga let me tell off a squill. I'd still skip tracks like Bickenhead and especially She Bad. YG committed a human rights violation with that chorus, but overall, it's a consistently solid album. We fake it so we make it work while everyone doubts. I was dreaming of a war show, so I'm still on the couch. You know, I used to enjoy G Easy's music. I used to think he wasn't that bad. Please don't hold it against me. But ever since he dropped his Scary Nights EP and his alternative album, Everything. What the fuck is it called? Everything's strange here, he's become a pretty fitting candidate for a list like this. He's just someone I can't really listen to anymore. Unless it's when it's dark out. This was probably Young Gerald at his best, in my opinion. Dark trap style bangers like Random and One of Them have beats that slap, and G Easy's cockiness on these songs is way more believable than it would sound on his albums later on. Figure what the fuck I wanna do in life. 
practiced it. Pay attention, none of this is happening by accident. Listen, I don't slack a bit. The first time I seen that Ferrari in person, I said, yeah, I want that, I'm certain. This bus pass I got, yeah, this shit's just not working. Of all things, with Too Short just has such a nice West Coast bounce to it, and that hook always makes me laugh, man. It's just worded perfectly. What if all things in this life you could pick to be? You sure look like a hater or a bitch to me. You Got Me is another one that's almost obnoxiously filled with ego, but I can't lie, it also goes pretty hard. Look at some of the production credits too. OZ, Boy Wonder, DJ Spins, Southside on two tracks. The production across the whole thing is pretty great. It even has production from Michael Keenan, who has produced multiple tracks for my friend Brad's favourite artist, Melanie Martinez. Other highlights for me are What If, Sad Boy, which has what I'd kind of describe as an early Joji type beat, it was kind of interesting to hear that track again, For This, and the heartbreaking Everything Will Be Okay, which is probably the most personal and heartbreaking track that g Easy has ever made. There's still plenty to criticise about the album, sure, it's not mind-blowingly great, but I do think it's g Easy's strongest work, been an enjoyable lesson. Tiki Tiki Spanish mommy, she a hot tamale. Make them spend that money, dummy, go retarded for me. I am not gonna fight for my life in the comments of this video defending this one. This is simply guilty pleasure music to the fullest. Dummy Boy was the last time that I truly had some interest in 6 ix music. It's simple, dumb, fun music with a feature on almost every track to help keep things exciting. You know, people were still okay with working with him at this point. Sexual misconduct with a minor? A-okay by the rap industry standards. Snitching allegations? Hold on now, buddy, we can't work with you anymore now that you seem like quite the unsavory character. It's wild, because on Metacritic, this is considered the third worst album on there out of 1,647 by their aggregate review score, but I don't think it's that bad. Of course, there's a ton of stuff to criticize on Dummy Boy if you're gonna look at it critically, but I'd much rather just turn my brain off completely and enjoy the silliness of it. It. Something that I can't do with an album like Tattletales, where it just sounds significantly worse. I mean, here you have producers like Murder Beats, Tay Keith, and especially Scott Starch, who make banging beats, but as far as I can remember, haven't worked with 6 9 again since. The production is one of the saving graces on here. A track like Kika legitimately goes hard, Kanga is hilarious, Tati is actually pretty hard too. Too, I think there's a lot of stuff to kind of enjoy here, even if 6 ix songwriting is extremely lazy. But that is why I label this one as guilty pleasure music. It's extremely far away from being a high quality album, but I can still kind of enjoy it in a certain way regardless. You know, the more I listen to Gunna's Gift and a Curse album, the less it's hitting for me. It has a couple of strong songs throughout, but overall, it's pretty boring and the replay value is low. Wanna is still at the top for me, and it's pretty much the only Gunna album I like. The production throughout this thing truly works for Gunna, and he hits some really clean flows on these beats. Nasty Girl, Feening, and Argentina all have Gunna sounding smooth as hell over the instrumentals. This album is the closest I've ever really felt to getting Gunna's music and vibe. Something about this one feels particularly cool, breezy, and somewhat melodic. Skybox and Dollars on My Head just have an exotic holiday type feel to them and I like it. And then Do Better is just one of my favourite Gunna songs, it has an instrumental that works perfectly for his voice. Yeah. I wanna see you do better, fly, I'ma need a propeller, fly, when it's cold on the 
Even the deluxe version has some solid additions, even if it does that really annoying thing of reordering the existing track list with the deluxe tracks just randomly sprinkled throughout it, so that at first glance you can't even really tell where they are. Sun came out and 200 for lunch are super smooth listens too. It still has its skips, I rarely ever listen to the title track or I'm on one, but I would say it has more tracks I like than ones that I don't. Like all of the albums on this list, I don't think it's perfect or anything, and it's not one of my favourite albums of the year that it came out in, but it's definitely the closest I've ever felt to understanding Gunna's hype and appeal. Big, big, big things, my little chain costs more than your big chain. Fuck with me, get it back. The words good and French Montana may sound like antonyms, but this is the most listenable project that I've heard in his discography thus far. I've barely heard anything yet, but Mans was alright on here. You can see in my twin's reaction to this album that by the end, he actually didn't hate it and thought it was an okay experience. Uh. We both weren't crazy about the second half of the album, but honestly since then, even a few of the simple bangers on that second half have grown on me a little bit. It is still Fuck Ty Dolla Sign's feature on Striptease to this day, but Push Start kinda goes hard, and Bag Season sometimes gets stuck in my head. They're simple, but solidly produced with a lot of catchy elements. Push Start whip, no switch on. Rolex so big, no tick on. Too bad. And the first half is fairly good honestly, Stuck in the Jungle is still an amazing song, Touch the Sky is beautifully produced and has a great hook, Handstand is entertaining, Didn't Get Far has a great fabulous verse, the production and the features are still the highlight on this album, but I really don't dislike French across it much at all. The album maybe still has a few too many French Montana solo tracks, but How You King, Fuck With Me Get A Bag and Losing Weight all carry the their length surprisingly well with French Montana being the only artist on them. How you the king rock star with a loose string or loose change or Donnie Brasco in the blues came. One day, I'm gonna do that video listening to every French Montana project like I did for every DJ Khaled album, and who knows, maybe I'll find one or two more good projects from French in there as well. And so everybody, that does it. These were six albums that I enjoyed to different degrees by artists that I usually don't. Thank you for watching, and you can of course click here to check out the companion video to this one. Much love to all my Patreon supporters and channel members for their support with a special shout out to my big ballers, and those are Big Daddy Foe, Griffin Upchurch, I Am Regent, KWG13270, and Lucas1123.